Hi, and welcome to a quick revision session on functional groups. So what I'll be presenting is two tables followed by some questions to help consolidate the information I'm about to deliver. These tables will represent the most common functional groups that you may come across during an examination setting. So let's begin. Let's begin with alcohols. Alcohols have an ending OL. Their functional group is OH which is attached to an R group. I like to think of an R group as the rest of the molecule. So in our example here, we've got our OH attached to a two carbon ethyl group, and this happens to be called ethanol. So if it ends with an OL at the end, you're most likely looking at an alcohol. So the ending will actually tell you the family to which that belongs to. Ethers have an Oxygen in the middle and either side have an R group. So in our example here, here's our oxygen. So we've got our oxygen here, we've got a methyl group on the left and a methyl group on the right, which represents our two R groups. And this happens to be called methoxymethane. So the, the clue here with regards to the name is the oxy. If you see oxy, you're dealing with an ether. Aldehydes have a CHO functional group, and that's represented in, in this example here, CHO. And in this particular example, we can see that the name of the aldehyde is ethanol. A lot of students sometimes get confused between alcohols and aldehydes in terms of their names because they sound similar, but you can quite clearly see that you've got an AL at the end which signifies that you're dealing with an aldehyde. Ketones, they're the one. They have an O-N-E at the end. And their functional group resides again in the middle of the molecule, just like an ether. But unlike an ether, we've got a C-O, which is represented here. And this is known as a carbonyl group, a carbon double bonded oxygen. On the left, we've got an R group. And again, on the right, we have an R group. And this happens to be called propan, not propan 1, but propanone. So O-N-E representing that we're dealing with a ketone. In your textbooks, you may also see this particular ketone called acetone. Okay, let's move on. Carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids have the functional group COOH represented here, COOH, attached to an R group. And if it ends with oic, as in this case, ethan oic acid, you're dealing with a carboxylic acid. Finally, esters have the functional group COO with two R groups, one on the left and one on the right. Clearly depicted in this example here, here's our COO, which is our functional group for an ester with our two R groups on either side. Again, in this example, it's called methyl methanoate. This presentation is not about naming. It's more about being able to identify the family and the functional group. So when it comes to the name, if it ends with O-A-T-E, you're dealing with an ester. Okay, let's move on to the second table. Okay, so here's our second summary table. Let's begin with amides. Amides have the functional group C-O-N-H. And this functional group is in the middle of the molecule, meaning that it's surrounded by two R groups. So clearly depicted here in our example, C-O-N-H with two R groups either side. The name of the molecule is N-methyl methanamide. The presentation is not about naming though. I'm more interested in you being able to identify the functional group and the family it belongs to. And in this particular example, it's a bit of a giveaway because at the end of the molecule, it actually states it's an amide. Amines have the functional group NH2. Here it is here in our example. And once again, just like amides, the actual amine name is at the end of the molecule, which pretty much tells you you're dealing with an amine. Thiols have an SH functional group. And just like the previous two, 
the name thiol is at the end of the name of the molecule. So in this case, we're dealing with methane thiol. Alkenes have a double bond between carbons. Here's our example here, and this is called ethene. So the end in four. Alkenes is ENE. Alkynes, on the other hand, have a triple bond and have the ending YNE. Finally, aromatics are represented by either a ring with a circle in the middle, which represents benzene. Benzene can also be represented in this structure as well. Our example here, we've got our benzene ring and it's attached to an OH. So this is an aromatic alcohol, which is known as phenol. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is just quickly go over what we've just covered and attempt the questions that come with this presentation next. Okay, so beginning with question one, which organic family is associated with each of the following functional groups? So what I'd like you to do is pause the video now, have a go and come back when you're ready. Great, so let's have a look at A. A is an aldehyde because we're dealing with a CHO. B, on the other hand, is an ether. Remember, ethers have an O in the middle and an R group either side. C happens to be an ester. So that's COO in the middle with an R group either side. D is an amine, while E happens to be a ketone. Remember how ketones have their carbonyl group in the middle and R groups either side. Okay, let's move on to question two. Identify the functional groups in the following molecule. Once again, pause the video, come back when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at A. Within A, you can clearly see the OH functional group which makes this an alcohol. B, on the other hand, we've got this group here, which represents a CHO, which happens to be an aldehyde. In C, we've got the CO in the middle, which is our carbonyl group, and you may recall that the carbonyl group has an R group either side. So this makes this a ketone. In D, we have an ester. So here's our functional group here. E, we have a thiol. F, we have an amine. G is an interesting one because we have two functional groups. We've got this group here, which is a carboxylic acid. And here we've got an NH2 just written backwards. So recall how earlier on we had an amine here. Well, we have an amine here as well. So this molecule here is carrying two functional groups. And it's an amino acid. Amino for the amine group and acid for the carboxylic acid functional group. G happens to be a monosaccharide and monosaccharides have lots of these OHs. Okay, here I've got a HO but it's actually still an alcohol functional group just written backwards. So here's another one. And finally, if you look here, we've got an oxygen, and that oxygen is bonded directly to here, which happens to be a carbon, and here, which happens to be a carbon. So in short, what we've got here is an ether. Finally, we've got an aromatic here. And the aromatic happens to be phenol which is an aromatic alcohol. Great, let's move on to the third question. What organic family do each of the following molecules belong to? Once again, pause, come back when you're ready. 
A ends with AL, so that makes this an aldehyde. B ends with OAT, which makes this an ester. C, butanoic acid, it's an acid, has the oic. So this is a carboxylic acid. Testosterone happens to be a hormone, but it's also a ketone. Recall how if you have the one at the end of the O-N-E, it's a ketone. Histamine, which we find in the body during inflammatory responses, is an amine. And finally, cholesterol has an O-L at the end, so it has an alcohol functional group.